Surprise, it's Banjo again. No one is surprised, but hello, we're here. Um, I guess I could take Kazooie back for now, since I conquered uh, the Stinky Cheese House. I stu still need to find Mr. Fit, and I'm not sure he is uh, where he is right now. As well as another two digits for that safe. So there was one here, and there was one, I think, by the cheese? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Boy, those enemies are really annoying. <gasps> Luz, hello! How are you? I hope you're doing well. I hope every well, everyone in chat is doing well this fine. I'm just gonna make sure. I think this, there's, what, what was in here? Shoes. Oh, that's right, for the, the last Mr. Fit is out here. Anyway, I hope everyone is doing well this fine, uh, shoes. <laughs> um, I've had a very long week. And I'm very tired, so, you know, bear with me. But that's, that's every day. Heh, <laughs> Bear, bear with me, get it? You know, because... Yeah, sometimes I say things and I regret them. What if I can get there without dying? There's nothing below me, huh? No, I should go on the, the inside. Yeah, I just store that whole critter in my backpack. I got a whole dragon with me. She's very rude, though. I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe if you can get a polite dragon? But Kazooie has never been polite to anyone in her life, ever. Sometimes I say things like the Ice Cube PSA. <laughs> well, I was even saying, I was uh, watching Luce here stream some Mario Odyssey the other day, and... I mentioned there, too, that I think part of the perks of streaming both as a streamer and a viewer of streams is the bizarre stream of consciousness monologues that occur. Sometimes you just say things, you know? Stuff just comes out. And I enjoy that absurdity. Well, here we go. Ugh. Oh, no, I've ruined it. Oh, I've destroyed this ecosystem. I guess that'll probably... Where is that going? Hailfire Peaks again? No? I don't remember. Oh, Pterodactyl lands! Well, good thing nature is restored and we didn't, like, flood out someone's home. I destroyed two ecosystems. Yippee! My pool's full of water! Where did it all come from? Well, I hope it's not like acid rain or anything. I don't know if I'd want to drink the, the water from Cloud Cuckoo Land. Mmm, tastes heavenly! Well, it did come from the clouds, Dippy. Did it? You said it wouldn't just drop from the sky. We haven't even talked to Dippy yet. I lied. Just drink it and be happy. Oh, I am. Here, take my odd-shaped gold tooth in exchange. Wow, that dinosaur just teleported that jiggy to our pockets. And yet they still went extinct. Uh, boy, we have not even spoken to Dippy. And yet we have this telepathic link to them. I suppose maybe from another timeline, another continuity, A.K.A. the last time I played through Banjo-Tooie. They still remember me. That's some puzzling dentistry right there. Well, I mean, I was gonna say we also, well, also got some teeth from Clanker, but no, we knocked out Clanker's teeth, so never mind. Oh, man. Uh, why do they always put bees near the things I need? No. No, 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 camera, no, no, camera. That's not what I wanted. I, I didn't want to engage with that bee. I wanted to avoid that bee. I can't believe I just... <sighs> puzzling dentistry. I get it now. I get it now. I hate it when things fly over my head. I mean, it's very funny, but at the same time, it's embarrassing because now it's, it's all recorded for posterity. Please don't fall off, Banjo. Your general rule of thumb is avoid that bee, but what if the bee comes to me? Yeah, the fact that there's a rock here blocking that grate with Kazooie's face on it kind of reminds me of um, how in Metroid Prime there's all these conveniently morph ball shaped um, holes and other things in the geometry, in the, the landscaping. 
and the space pirates have left so many devices around that are compatible with um, uh, Samus's gear, which I appreciate. So I need Solo Kazooie to get in here, right? So I'm gonna have to get to the central mountain and glide over somehow, I think. Um, aside from that, I'm just looking around here. Yeah, there's another egg here, too. I wonder if there's a closer split-up pad somewhere. Because I'm not sure. Boy, this looks like a crack in a wall I should be able to blow up. Instinctively, I wanted to pull out my scan visor to see what it's made of, but... No, it, it doesn't work that way. Things do not work that way. Okay, I need to get Kazooie up here. No, no B. No, 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 no. So let's go in the mountain here. And I can see what entrance this is. Okay, so this is up here. Is this by the where the safe is? Yes, okay, okay. So if I can get Kazooie... Um, where are the more... Oh, I need more suction cup shoes. Do not. Do not. Do not. Where can I find another pair? There they are. Okay. Claw clamber boots. That's what they're called. There's a whole meme among the Metroid fandom about space pirates being obsessed with tubes and saying tubes because of all the morph ball shaped tunnels there are lying around in the world. Does anybody remember... Jeez, what... What stuff is it commercials for? Like, Gogurt or something? In tubes? Where there's just a robotic voice going, Tubes, because that's what I'm the voice I'm reading it in? I don't think anyone knows what I'm talking about. I barely know what I'm talking about. I was gonna say, you're in a Metroid Discord server, and then, of course you're in a Metroid Discord server. Why would you be anywhere else? Okay, I'm gonna switch to Kazooie. That meme is ancient. Also, hello, Vel. Vel and Val. I have to make sure I enunciate clearly. Nope, come on. Kazooie's very slippery. Like, control-wise, but also just generally as as an individual. Please don't take Dolph fall damage and make me lose my boots, thank you. Gogurt is both a scrumptious afternoon snack and a strange command. Go, 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 Gogurt, Gogurt, Gogurt! Oh, we did it. The Gurt has gone. That enemy was indeed holding a sausage. Uh, this is Cloud Cuckoo Land. AKA Wacky Land. So those enemies have sausages and candy canes and. Goodbye, Kazooie. Come on. <laughs> Distressed chicken noises. Well, that did not work out like I wanted to. Kazooie will not be waving goodbye. Kazooie refuses. Kazooie will not die. You know that, that part in Undertale that's like, but it refused? That's Kazooie. Well, uh, how am I gonna get back in there? I guess I could just die and respawn at the pad. Oh, or I could fly. Never mind. That is the better solution. I mean, I do still need to hatch that egg. I can hatch that egg and then glide over, I think. Or the part in Chrono Trigger, but the Kazooie refused to die. So I don't think I've talked about it on stream, but I've mentioned it to a couple of people off stream, is that Metroid Prime has been reminding me a lot of... Please get in the egg, Kazooie. A lot of Chrono Trigger, in the sense that this being has... Uh, oh, that's that's where the, the... I need to put that bean separate from being. Anyway, so this, this meteorite has crashed down from space, and Metroid Prime implies there is some life form within, and it indelibly affects the natural ecosystem and all the life forms on the planet, and an evil force is attempting to use it for their own gain. You just replace uh, magic with Phazon, and it's the same thing, right? That's my, my game theory. But I wish Kazooie had like a, a an ability ability to restore her health like Banjo. She's probably too prideful for that. Inside the trash can. 
Here is where I belong. Salted snack treats with extra salty goodness. Snacky fatty chocks with... Does that say extra fatty goodness? I think it does. Guff beans, Jolly's juice, milky milky mm, sour milk. Isn't that just yogurt in a way? Why? It's always Minjo's. It's Minjo's all the way down. Redacted. Oh, now I gotta hurry up and beat Metroid Prime. Spew. I can't even see something canned carrots. What quality? Poor quality canned carrots. High fat, low in calcium. And there she is. Missing, Tootie, Lassie, and Banjo-Kazooie. If that's that Minjo that has respawned, I swear to God. Also, Cosmo is here. I'm gonna get these honeycombs. Her one appearance. Well, she was... Mmm, cola. She was on a picture frame in Banjo's house, but we all know how that turned out. A visitor. Guffo doesn't get many visitors in his trash can. I'm not surprised. It stinks. I prefer to think of it as an acquired aroma. Perhaps you could help me. I'm facing eviction from my trash can by the health and hygiene department unless I clean the place up. Shall I tell you about the problem? Uh, Kazooie would love to hear about your problem, so she can make fun of it to other people. It's these filthy germs that live in here. I've been told to get rid of 50 points worth. Killing a red germ scores one point, green ones are worth two. And these nasty blue germs get you three points. Will you give it a try? Yes. You've got 60 seconds to kill 50 points worth of germs. Woohoo. Man, you know, Rare, you could have, like, chosen any other sound effect for that guy's top dialogue. I guess it's like Captain Blubber and his, his burping. Oh, get in there. Mwah. This feels like Dr. Mario, but disgusting. Ugh. Are you to believe that trash cans have landlords? Oh yes, and the rent is atrocious. I'm not doing well. Oh man, I need more germs. I need to actually hit the germs? It is that same dang Minjo, I swear to god. I do not have high hopes for this attempt. I might get lucky if I can get some blues. Please, please. As nothing spawns in front of me. You killed 42 points worth! It's not enough, I'm afraid. I don't want to be evicted. We'll get you a better trash can. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't have to give me the countdown with your, your noises, sir. Mr. Guffo. Guffy, what was your name? You're taking Spanish lessons, so you saw the, the, the poor said porqué. Which means why, which is accurate enough for canned carrots. Canned veggies have their place. I like it like in soups. Or uh, my dad made borscht earlier and used canned bean beets. Uh, and uh, canned beets are a lot more convenient to use than fresh raw beets. I don't know if you've ever prepared beets before, but oh boy, those stain, it looks like you have killed a man. Get it, get it, please. Please, please. There's a blue one behind me. Oh, it's green. Ah! Oh, let me try again. Yeah, I know you don't want to be evicted. Just let me in. You missed borscht. Maybe you should make some borscht, Val. There's a, I've talked about it before, there's a YouTube channel I enjoy called uh, Tasting History that has an episode about uh, Ukrainian borscht, which was interesting and informative. Gosh darn it. Ugh. Please. Please. Have I not killed enough germs? 
Maybe these are the low well, the, the landlords themselves that I am I am killing. Oh man. Why? Okay, okay, I just want to remind everyone that when I streamed Banjo-Kazooie, I did all the Mr. Vile challenges for its try. Without the shoes, I, I feel like I should be cut some slack here. I'm just saying that to convince myself, desperately. I'm gonna try this one more time, and if it doesn't pan out, then too bad for Guffy. The first Banjo did not have as many minigames, no. Have you played either one, Kapodoko? This one, um, compared to the first game, not just more minigames, but the worlds themselves are much larger and more interconnected, and there's a lot more backtracking involved, I swear to- uh. Is there a god in the Banjo-Kazooie universe? Who do they swear to? I mean, obviously Kazooie believes in no god but herself. Is Banjo a good Christian bear? Does that exist? Maybe everybody's into the occult here. I mean, we got witches. This is what I mean. Stream of consciousness thoughts. Come on. God, Kazooie's wings must be filthy right now. Also, who decided these germs should vanish like the second I approach them? It's like going for a teammate's tacticooler in Splatoon. And it vanishes just before you get a sippy. Nope, you're getting evicted, Guffy. Goodbye. <laughs> Am I okay? Am I okay? Oh, I'm better than this guy. No. I don't feel like it. No! Nope. Well, it's been a great- Oh, I'll be sorry to be thrown out. <laughs> I think it's worth it for Kazooie just going, Nope. See ya. Well... I tried, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> One of the major criticisms you hear of this second title is that it tries too hard in various facets. There is a lot in this game, and it can definitely get, um, maybe not overwhelming exactly, but just there, there's so much to do, and I, again, because uh, there's a lot of backtracking and a lot of um, interconnected elements between the levels that it takes a lot longer to do than Banjo-Kazooie and not always for the better. Kazooie needs a bath now. She will not be taking a bath. She doesn't have time for baths. I Seriously, I don't know where Mr. Fit is. I need to find him. Maybe, well, there is that other bean um, where that egg was. So maybe if I go back in, oh, there's an eight here. Uh, okay, is that inside? It's in the mountain. Okay. Um, I guess I need to get back in the mountain. Is there anywhere below me I can get into the mountain from? I don't know. Here we go. Yeah, Donkey Kong 64 is especially too much. Like, this game is big, but that game is enormous. And not just the levels, but the fact it takes so long to get everything because you have five characters to switch through. And you can only pick up most collectibles with the character that they're color-coded to. So there's a lot of unnecessary back and forth in Donkey Kong 64, and it gets really tedious. Um, okay, I need to get up there. Um, do I have to go there with just Banjo? How do I get up there with just Banjo? Hmm, because I can't take the Claw Clamber boots. Um, hmm. Thinking here. There, there, there were some vines. Maybe if I just go up this side way, I can climb. Ow, what the heck? Yeah, you also can't switch characters automatically in Donkey Kong 64. You can only do it at tag barrels. I know there is a mod for it out there that lets you switch characters whenever and wherever, which I think would go a long way to making the game less tedious. But even then, like, just... There's a lot of unnecessary busy work, is my recollection. Um, just like a lot of it doesn't feel organically designed. Like all these switches lying around with the characters' faces on them and such. Oh, hello, Endora. 
Welcome. And Dora knows all about the suffering of Donkey Kong 64 because he's been streaming it for up to 100%. Also, this is not where I need to be to get up there. Mm. Let me poke around. Maybe I can find it somewhere else. <laughs> you can reply to anything you want, Andorra. It doesn't matter if it's if it was said recently or not. I'm not here to tell people what they can and cannot do. Well, you can't do that, buddy. I don't appreciate that. I guess since you've also been asking about my Metroid Prime progress, rude, um, I have all the artifacts now. And I am saved at Samus' ship, so I just have to go and um, collect, for lack of a better word. Oh, you couldn't reply to. Love to see a button that has a peanut on it. Coconuts just won't do. That's right. Only this specific type of ammunition will work on this switch. Hang on, I'm gonna take a little snooze. Uh, I am happy that you don't mind uh, my Metroid Prime updates. Why does everything respawn so fast? Weh. Weh. Okay, this is not where I need to go, but I need to get up there as Banjo somehow. Hmm. I feel like oh, there, there's another split-up pad somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Ow, there's like so many years of Metroid memes that I've been out of the loop on for so long, but now I can at least understand tubs. Ow. Do I recall my item counts? Um, I found the last energy tank I was missing. It was encased in some ice just on my way to pick up an artifact, so that's good because um, I'm not specifically going for 100% because I have no idea like where the things I've missed would be, and that would just take... Gosh darn, I did not want to do that. It would just take forever to trawl the world trying to find what it is I've missed. Oh, this is this is from last time where that bee punted me. Um, that's, that's right. That's where the cheese is. Where does this take me? Whoop. Oh, the mumbo. Um, but I have all the energy tanks and I have 185 missiles. Why that? Oh, I haven't been here before. Jello Castle. Oh boy. It's like the, uh, that ice sculpture in Mario 64 in Cool Cool Mountain. You know the one. Oh, good thing I came here as Banjo. Eh. There we go. Uh, I have five power bombs. I don't know how many there are. Finally, ow, something in this world that probably smells nice. I mean, it's Cloud Cuckoo Land. You can't trust that it's, like, cherry flavor or whatever. I don't know. What's, what's a, a flavor that would be red and gross? And don't say blood. That's too obvious. Blood is too easy a joke to make. <laughs> the other exit from up the mountain. Okay. I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna find him. Maybe, if these guys don't kill me first. I mean, if they kill me, I guess whatever. Because it's not a big deal since I just respawned back at the split-up pad. You know what that jello castle reminds you of? An ice castle like the one in Crystal Caves. Are you in Crystal Caves yet, Andorra? Oh, can I read the sign underwater? I can. She who mends carts can also fix mice! What, Canary Mary? Fixes and rig? And if you are in the, um, uh, Crystal Caves level in Donkey Kong 64, have you been in the, that one cabin where, like, if you screw up and get caught, you get a get out and you have, like, a second to get out or something? I still hate that get out. I'm sure everybody does. Everyone who's played Donkey Kong 64 knows. Oh, well, you're done with Crystal Caves. Just DK Isles, Creepy Castle, and the Rabbit are left. Oh, the one in Fungi Forest? You know what is also, to me, a mark against Donkey Kong 64? Is 
the noises all the characters make. Also, what is, like, is there a point to this, this area? What is out here? I see you, Canary Mary. Ugh. Um... But yeah, all the, all the noises the characters make, like, especially Lanky. I'm sorry, Lanky, but like the woo la -ho, woo la -ho, you know, the one he makes when he long jumps. And the hop, hop, hop he makes when he runs on his hands. The Cabot and the Beetle race for the first time she got mad in the stream. And yes, I'm pretty sure bears can swim. I mean, how else are they going to get that sweet, sweet s salmon? I thought that guy was going to hit me, but he didn't. Okay, well, there's the safe. Why can I not find where Mr. Fit is? There isn't an exit over here, yeah? Uh, I feel like I'm going crazy. I mean, there's over there, I guess. The red exit? Like, the one across from me? Or this one? This is a red exit. Obla! <laughs> Your dad thought he said Oprah. Oprah! Your mom used to hear you play Donkey Kong 64 and she commented how Tiny Kong's Wee! was cute. Moose can swim, that is true. And boy, it looks weird. I've seen pictures of moose swimming. Apparently they can dive pretty deep too, if I'm not misremembering. Is there anything interesting back here? Oh, there's a vine. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, look up video of moose swimming. Well, I gotta say, it's it's a weird feeling when, like, you're trying to play a game and, like, your parents come in and start commenting on what's going on. Because it feels like it always happens during the weirdest part of a game. Wow, that bee just got, like, stuck in the ground. Rip to him, but I'm different. I'm alive. Okay, here we go. I remember for years wanting the ability to pause cutscenes and games because it just it felt like parents would always walk in like in the middle of an important cutscene it's like mom no there's plot happening uncomfortable memories of your mom seeing the great fairy in Ocarina of Time oh no yeah that would be a weird thing to explain okay so that must be where Mr. Fit is Boing. Okay, so I've planted a bean. Um, so now I have to go back to... Actually, no, Mumbo's in the pink skull. Can I go to Mumbo is just Banjo? Hopefully Mumbo's like, no, you can't hang it up my house without Kazooie. <laughs> Your mom said, holy crap, in a really exasperated way. Oh, no. Well, hey, at least it wasn't the great fairies in Breath of the Wild. Maybe? Good job, Banjo. Not a fan of triangles. Honestly, I feel like the most alarming part about the great fairies in Ocarina of Time is their, their scream laugh, you know? Which I'm not gonna mimic, because who could? Hello, Mumbo. <gasps> no! Mumbo not help unless Bear and Bird both safe in Skull. What do you mean you care about the well-being of both of us? Surely Mumbo would be like, Oh, thank God, Kazooie's not here. <laughs> Val. <laughs> Boy, Tears of the Kingdom is out in, like, what, two weeks? Which is weird to think about. Boy, and the sequel to Fuga, because that came up a little before stream, um, is coming out May 11th. Oof. Oof. Ow. Like, that's, that's not a great time release. Mumbo just thinks Kazooie is funny. Is, is Mumbo soon dead for Kazooie? I should just let these things kill me. I mean, I know the... 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 Split up pads are right above me, but it would have been faster to throw myself off the mountain. Yeah, you know what? Just just kill me. Just just end it. So I don't have to climb back up. I need one more. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, death by Christmas. That's such a dramatic roll, too. 
Yeah, I and I don't think I'm gonna get Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom right away. Um, just because, well, a budget, but also, um, I don't know, I mean, I should be done Metroid Prime well before then. I don't know, I'll think about it. It's just, I want to have the energy to appreciate it. I feel like I need to take time off work to play Zelda. Death by Christmas, those creatures did not look a bit like Mariah. <laughs> They're Mariah's familiars. Death by Christmas just sounds like Black Friday shopping. Ugh. Ugh. I have never gone to any kind of shopping center for a Black Friday sale, and I never will because I value my safety too much. And I feel like you're probably not really getting that great of a deal, but they, they make you think you are. I mean, I don't know for sure. I'm sure some places actually do give you deals, but... Just having a fight through crowd, eh, that doesn't sound like a good time to me. I don't like going to malls on a good day. Too noisy. I had to take the, the train back from a doctor's appointment today, and it was crammed with rowdy teenagers. Like, crammed. Like, and they were yelling at the top of their lungs kind of thing. Like, every time the, the, the train came to a stop and one of them kind of, like, slipped or fell, like, it's just loud yelling. Like, to the point where someone else in the train yelled at them, like, Hey, guys, chill out! Which, of course, is just met with raucous laughter from all these rowdy teenagers, because if they don't care enough to respect other people's... Get up there, Mumbo! Uh, other people's space on the train, of course they're not gonna chill out when someone irate tells them to. And then another passenger was like, don't you have teachers or parents? And I was thinking, well, clearly they don't on the train. Ow. <laughs> I knew that's what you meant, Andorra, but I guess it's good to clarify in the chat. Don't worry, I was reasonably certain that was what you meant. Where is the, the path to the pot of gold before these these things kill me? I think it's... I don't think it's here. I think it's nearby. Because I know I had to, to run a little bit. Why is Mumbo so ineffectual? I don't know. It's like, because he's not responsible for the transformations anymore, he's slacking. Okay, it's the next cave over. The next cave. Yeah, he's resting on his laurels. Rowdy teenagers are nature's scariest creatures. They're definitely up there. I mean, I feel like... Entitled rich people are also pretty high up on the... The scary factor. I don't think this is... I think it's the one above me that I need. But I'm just gonna stick my nose out here anyway. <laughs> yeah, starting a statement like that is definitely gonna raise some eyebrows without context. Why did, uh... Maury, did you go in a circle? Look, look. Let me live my life. I'm tired. I'm so tired. My god. It's been a really long week. Ow. Red exit leads to Red Skull. Good to know. I'm gonna freaking die to these guys. Ugh. I can't believe I went in a circle. I went in a circle. And I'm gonna get hit by another one of these guys and I'm gonna die. Death by sausage. Eyes of Skull hides the secret. Is that the original, a hint from the original Zelda? I don't remember. Oh man, they're gonna kill me, they're gonna kill me. Oh, please, please. Better to go in a circle than to see THE circle? I've actually seen that movie, believe it or not. Okay, it's up here I need to go. <laughs> now we're going straight to hell, goodbye. Anyway, I've actually seen that movie because I had to for a work outing that I didn't want to do. But it's like, no, you need to, you need to hobnob with your coworkers. We're all gonna go see a movie, and it was that was the one they picked, and it was awful. Ugh. And also, um, what's her face? Emma Watson. Her American accent kept slipping, and it was really distracting. I'm die, thank you forever. I love Inugame Korone's English. I think her accent's very cute. 
Uh, there's just something charming about it. I think her accent in Japanese is also very cute. Nahone? If only I, too, one day could be as cute as Inugami Korone. I think about, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the, the VTuber Inugami Korone, there's some videos of hers where she plays the original Mario Bros. Why do I keep going in a dang circle when I need to go here? Ugh. She plays the original Mario Bros. And... Um, she challenges herself to only speak English for the stream, despite having limited English knowledge. And it was entertaining to see her describing things with the limited vocabulary she had and getting really creative. I thought that was very enjoyable, but also a lot of the things she said just, as they say, live rent-free in my brain. Like, title house. Small, small title house. Okay, here we go. This is where I need to go. Hug the walls, not the central pillar. That's... See, that's smart advice. Oh, Val, did you say turtle house before I said it? You're also thinking... Tattle house. Small, small tattle house. And, and please know, to, to be very clear, I'm not making fun of her accent, because I think I like her accent very much. It's, it loses something if I just say turtle house. Small, small turtle house. It's the way she says it. Water in the fire, why? Water in the fire, why? Most of you know of Ko most of what you know of Korone stems from Ikambogam! Ikambogam! I think she did go back and finish Banjo Kazooie. I think her initial streams of it, she only got to um, Bubble Gloop Swamp, but she went back and finished it. I should just kill Mumbo. What am I doing? Death Warp! Ikambokam! <laughs> I am BMW. I am safe driver. I think actually the animation someone made of Korone saying Ikambokam um, was actually the first bit of Korone content I'd ever seen. I don't watch uh, a lot of VTubers because I have no attention span. But I see... Wait, why am I... See, I'm going back here. I don't want to go back here. Don't knock me down. I need up. Mumbo need up. Heck, kill me. Kill me. Kill me. I got distracted. I don't know where I'm going. I'm thinking about you know, Gami Korone. Your fave Korone moment is her going, I'm dog, okay? There we go. Thank God he's dead. Um, okay, I'm gonna put Mumbo away. I'm sorry, I'm so distracted. <laughs> I actually have... Because I know there were some streams of Korone playing Doom Eternal. And someone had edited the logo to say Doog. Because dog. And I have in Pokemon uh, Violet, I have a Puchiana. Um, named Doog and a... No, no, stop that. A Mighty Inna, Mighty Inna? Never had to say it out loud, jeez. Named Doog Eternal. Yeah, she's really good at games, too. She plays a lot of retro stuff. Actually, what I'm most impressed of with Korone is her... She streams for like eight hours at a time. I don't know, I, I, I go crazy. I'm not good at sitting in one place. I mean, I guess you, you take a break now and then, but even then. You have to talk so much, too. Okay, I'm back on track. I know where I'm going now, and now that I have that frame of reference, Red Exit, Red Skull, um, I won't get lost this time, knock on wood. Thank you for your patience. I feel like I've been spoiled by Metroid and having a map I can look at. <laughs> I pull out the map a lot. Even like when my destination is only a couple of rooms away and it's a fairly straight shot, I'm just always confirming that I'm going the correct direction. Because I know how distractible I get. Um, for those of you that have played Metroid Prime, that 
gauntlet, for lack of a better word, where you have to go, like, where you get the, uh, the power bombs at the end. <laughs> it's very funny that Banjo takes fall damage like that. Um, I got partway through the beginning of it, and I got distracted at the end, and I got turned around and then walked back. Then realize, oh heck, I went the wrong way and I had to fight my way through all those pirates again. <laughs> Oops. This stream is not sponsored by Metroid Prime, I think as much as Kapodoka would like it to be. Maybe Samus should take some brand deals. Like, I mean, she's got a lot of uh, real estate on her ship and on her power suit. Why not slip, like, slap some stickers on there? <laughs> you wish you were sponsored by Metroid Prime. Has anybody made, like, a bag shaped like a Metroid? That would be cute. I think I'm playing it wrong, because every time, like... Can I just say the fish in Metroids are really annoying? Every time I encounter a Metroid, just a regular Talon Metroid, and they try to come at me, I'm like, not now, buddy. And then I, I say, like, sorry, bud, when I shoot them. Oh, there you are, Furball. Event two is a sack race. Find a sack from somewhere and race me to the finish line. Oh, that is the wrong sack. I see you have a sack, Furball. Fancy a little race across the stony course. No, I don't know why Mr. Fate is the only character who has an accent like that. But that's what happened the first stream, and I'm sticking with it. You want a Metroid hat that attaches to your face. Now, for verisimilitude, does it also need to suck up your life force? Oh god, this is wobbly. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good. Oh no! I'm glad it just ends it before you die. Man. As I thought, a predictably easy victory for Mr. Fit. Yeah, another race. Jeez. Jeez. Sabotage. Oh no, camera, camera, camera. Oh man. Ah, I hate everything. <laughs> See, now, if Banjo was in a Metroid backpack, this wouldn't happen. It's kind of alarming in Prime that the Metroids, um, when they latch onto you, like, it just becomes... It go, you, like, it takes up your whole visor. Well, it was kind of a alarming the first time, but now it's like, buddy, buddy, I'm busy. Come on, buddy. It's like, like a cat jumping on your desk. Metroid just wants attention. There we go, we're good. We're good, we're good. Hang on a sec. Sorry, if you see me, like, moving around. I think my camera is crooked. Ugh. There we go. What? You must have cheated! You ain't won yet, Furball! See you around for event three! Maybe if you give it belly rubs, it won't suck up your brain. Do Metroids have, like, a discernible belly? So where does that flower at the end shoot me? Probably just back. That is not the correct button combo. There we go. I'm gonna go around the long way. Um, because I don't trust that little path. And I don't have now the race protecting me. Oh, lens flare. I'm pretty sure Mr. Fit is an... Uh, Anteater, if I had to guess, because of that big schnoz. Or an aardvark. One of the two. Mr. Fit, what are you doing in my falafel? What about friend vouchers? <laughs> exactly, do you think he knows Arthur? And maybe his first name is Arthur. Yeah, like Lusa, or not... No, Luce asked if he knew Arthur. <laughs> it's, it's Joe who said Arthur fit. Woo, woo. <laughs> Incredible. I guess that's fine. 
Because I need to go back to Kazooie anyway. And I keep forgetting I can death warp. Its belly is its head. Its whole head? Okay. Oh, give, me, give me my dragon. What? Why, why can't I pick her up? Hello? Is there something in my backpack? What's going on here? Huh? Why can't I rejoin Banjo? Is there something in my bag? Yeah, my backpack looks full, but there's nothing in it. Oh. Oh, you're... St how? What? Buh? How? Okay. Gah. Uh -huh. I'm just I'm losing my mind. Like how why was that thing in there? That thing was not supposed to be in there. Did how did I just pick it up and I just not notice? I mean I know I'm very easily distracted, especially today, but come on. <laughs> Stowaway. Sorry, Kazooie, you've been replaced. This thing won't sass me back. But I guess it's also not a dragon, so... Pros and cons. There's a bit in Arthur where he learns how to spell aardvark to a rhythm, and you definitely said it like that when you typed it before. I see you have your running shoes on. Do you think you could beat me to the finish line and the gold medal? I will kill you, Mr. Fit. In the race. And then I will kill you in real life. The boatman from Undertale permanently affected your vocabulary. How so, Val? I gotta know. What a heck, Kazooie, you're too slow. Do I have to do this as solo Kazooie? Cause Banjo's too heavy? Is that what's going on here? Oh, the dangling commas. Oh. No need for a photo finish there. Mr. Fit is still the champion. I think I might need to come back a solo Kazooie. I understand. Not everyone is in as good shape as I am. Yet your shape is nose. Get off your high horse. There's a spelling aardvark to a rhythm makes me think of when I was little, um, my dad taught me things like our phone number. Oh man, I thought that was the water, but the water was above me. Um, taught me our phone number and our address and other things like that through song. Because I've always had a good memory for sound and music. So I can remember things a lot better if there is a rhythm to them. New fashion just dropped. Nose. That's right. Like tiny anime noses are out. Finally, everybody gets cool and interesting nose shapes. Everybody knows about it already. Of course, no one will be as, as cool as, as aardvarks, so, I mean, why bother? Aardvarks are the pinnacle of fashion now. Okay, please don't fall, please don't fall. Schnoz is the new hotness. I can't even blame that on, like, my weird stream of consciousness now. Let's all chat. Okay. I'm fast, I'm free of a bear. No, wait, no, don't run past him. Hello? Okay, as long as these shoes don't run out mid-race. Shoes is the new hotness. Schnoz. Let's get some schnoz. Oh my god, schnoz. There we go. Yeah, that's right. Get out of here. Woohoo. I almost wish I had kept running without stopping and just flung myself off the ledge. But it wouldn't be organic. I have to do it by accident. Otherwise, it's not funny. Oh, I lost! I can't believe I was beaten by a bag of feathers! Take my medal. I'm off to the gym to train for next season. Woohoo. You'd play th pay three chimkin nuggets 
to see me with an aardvark nose. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have any sort of aardvark nose loaded on my VTuber model. You're just gonna have to imagine my, my Arthur Sona. You think people made Arthur Sonas? They gotta have, right? In Nuts and Bolts, the key side characters play different roles for each world. And those popular characters who are in every world are Mumbo, Humba Wumba, and Mr. Fit! Fan favorite Mr. Fit. You know what? I do still need to get, like, the other letters for... Or not let uh, numbers for the safe, but I kind of want to backtrack and start going to other worlds now. Matt Damon was on Arthur. What's what's Matt Damon's Arthur Sona? <laughs> you just looked it up. Oh no! Oh no! I'm a little concerned now. He doesn't match the art style. Oh. You know what they should have done in an episode of Arthur? Maybe they have. I don't know. I have not seen Arthur in many years. Um, was they should have... Uh, not Arthur himself, but like another aardvark character who looks as Arthur does in the original Arthur books. Because the way he looked got a lot more stylized. And he kind of lost his nose. Oh no, someone has found Matt Damon. Oh, gee. Oh, no. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. You want to see stream? I guess if you don't want to have to look up Matt Damon and Arthur, look at him. Oh, I hate it. Ooh. Postcards from you. Yeah, if you read one of those postcards, it reveals how and when you die. Mm. I don't think I like that. I bet, I bet Arthur is being, like, held at gunpoint for that photo op. So wait, does, like, the Jason Bourne universe exist in Arthur? Is there a version of, like, the, the, the Bourne movies, but with aardvark Matt Damon or whatever animal he's supposed to be? Okay, so where do I want to backtrack to? Because how many jiggies do I have? 50? Oh! I think I've actually got enough to open the last world. Do I want to backtrack? Well, I know there's a couple things I do want to do. One, because it's been haunting me, I want to take another crack. One more crack at ordnance storage. The other thing I want to do is fight the boss in Grunty Industries, because I forgot to do that. The original Arthur book is about Arthur accepting that his nose is big, and then they they take away that important life lesson by giving him a small round nose. Well, I guess like most of his face is still nose, but you know what I mean. He doesn't look like an aardvark anymore. Which I remember not being sure what a lot of the characters on Arthur were supposed to be animal-wise. Like, what's Muffy? I figure Francine is maybe some kind of monkey? with her face shape, but I don't know what Muffy is supposed to be. Well, hello, Pedro. Welcome. We are streaming some Banjo-Tooie. Please don't mind this strange uh, pixelated effect here as I'm assembling this puzzle. No Banjo. To the right. There you go. Good bear. Which unfortunately makes this a lot harder than it needs to be. I'm just working with these broad shapes. The brain is a bear. It's hard to tell, though. Which, boy, that sounds really weird out of context, considering I am playing as a bear currently. I think Banjo is a smart bear. Smarter than the average bear, perhaps. How do you feel about picnic baskets, Banjo? Did anybody see that Yogi Bear movie that came out a while ago with, like, Justin Timberlake as Boo Boo? I just remembered that existed. You play an N64, pixelated stuff is normal for you. Ah, good. So this is not all that jarring. The Backstreet Boys have an Arthur Sona? The Arthur Wiki says Muffy is a monkey. She's also a monkey? 
Binky is a bulldog. See that? I could see, though. Binky looks like a bulldog. And, oh, what's his face? Buster? He looks like a rabbit. Was his name Buster? Because now I'm thinking about uh, uh, Tiny Toons. Am I getting my rabbits mixed up? Buster Baxter. Thank you. You reminded me of things that deserve to be buried, Maury. You know, for a brief second, I parsed that as... You remind me of a thing that deserves to be buried, Maury. <laughs> I was like, what have I said now? Oh, you're trying to beat this game 100%? Have you done it before? What do you mean I do not have enough jiggies to attempt challenge 10? Buster Baxter sounds like a No More Heroes guy. 70! I need 70 whole jiggies. Oh, that's right. I can't go to the last, last area yet, can I? Can I do the quiz yet? I don't remember. Well, best of luck with your 100% run. I hope you know the trick for Canary Mary, because I sure didn't when I first played this game many years ago. Only the final boss is beyond the last door. Okay, thank you. I remember the final boss for this game. Wait, this isn't where I want to go. I want to go to the next area. Um, but I don't remember the specifics of the fight. Like, I remember what the boss looks like, and I remember broad strokes. I don't recall it being as obnoxious as Grunty was in the first Banjo-Kazooie. I forgot how tough that fight was until streaming it and just, ooh. Did you do all the Canary Mary races? It's... The first three you do, I think, aren't bad. But it's the last one where you can't beat her unless you know the trick. Because she rubber bands so hard. Oh no, that's right, there's first person aiming. Oh no. Pedro, if you're... When you're playing this, I hope you're playing it on console because I am not. I have... An Xbox 360 controller, but this is the N64 version. And, uh, boy, the C buttons do not work well with the right stick. <laughs> okay, you've got, you've got the cartridge good. It's much better at actual hardware, because, boy, trying to do first-person aiming with the right stick and everything is... Ooh, it's... it's ugly. Muffy's last name is Crosswire, huh? Okay, does anybody remember exactly where to go to fight the boss here? I have a vague recollection of, like, the air conditioner plants. Ow. Boy, this place really needs a, a map. Oh, no. Are you invoking that old commercial? Yes, you are. I'm glad you won the, won the uh, Canary Mary race, because, yeah, back when I played it on the N64, I did not know the trick. <laughs> I feel like you have to use the EMP with Mumbo somewhere. Um, but I don't remember where. Uh, the trick for Canary Mary is that her second race in Cloud Cuckoo Land, she rubber bands um, a lot more than expected. So the trick is that you have to hang back and only mash at the very end. Because if you just mash the whole way through, she's likely going to get so far ahead that she's unbeatable. Yeah, pressing it steadily instead of fast. That's the trick. But when little Mori played banjo to eat for the first time she did not know the trick and eventually gave up on that cheeto page <laughs> it's like no you know what i don't care behind the door next to the room where you learn the kazooie back jump okay so that's the room with the toxic sludge in it do you remember what floor that's on again this is one of those levels where it really needs a map Your problem is finding some jiggies, but you look at YouTube videos from there. I'm glad that we have YouTube videos as a game reference in this day and age. 
back in my day, boy, I'm gonna sound old now. <laughs> And this is what happens whenever Loose streams. I'm at one of his, one of his streams, and we're all reminded of how much a baby of a baby Loose is with regards to age. Back in my day, you couldn't look up YouTube videos on the internet. You had to hope you had a strategy guide, or just play and play. Okay, here's the second floor. Yeah, Grundy Industries is tough. Oh, there's another one of those sad rabbits. You get a list of Jiggies in the Jiggy Wiggy Temple, huh? I didn't know that either. Yeah, that's right, we had game facts, but those text guides could only go so far. Remember those guides that would have, like, the really elaborate, uh... ASCII? ASCII? Ax ASCII? You know that? The text art. Oh wait, no, I shouldn't do that. Those are the ones with the, the choking sludge. Okay, so behind the door next to the room where I learned the Kazooie backflip. So this is where I learned the Kazooie backflip, yes. Oh, there's a Cheeto page back there. Yeah, the floor mechanic in Grunty Industries, um, as you can tell, I get turned around a lot. Hmm. <sighs> the door labeled Electromagnet Chamber. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, I see, I see. So is this where I have to take Mumbo? Okay. So I need to hit that switch with the washing machine. And I seem to recall that I need Mumbo in here somewhere. Sir? Ma'am? Can? Hey, Grunty Industries is definitely very... Confusing. Okay, here we go. Boy, I, I feel like this is also time, like the other um, EMP challenge. So I think I need to get Mumbo here, then quickly turn into a washing machine and hit the switch. Or is it the other way around? Can. <laughs> okay, does anybody remember offhand if you hit the switch first and then get Mumbo over here? Or is it the other way around? Mumbo first. Thank you. Now I just need the nearest warp pad. But since I have a better idea of where I'm going now, I think it should go a little better. Oh, you beat Banjo-Kazooie twice. Did you do that one 100% too? When I streamed it, I did it 100% except for the honeycomb pieces. I've never bothered to get all the honeycomb pieces in that game. So I'm not going to be able to get Mumbo through this way, I don't think, because I don't think he can climb. Uh, you can't hit the switch because the electromagnet blocks you. Thank you. Where's the nearest teleporter pad on the other side of this? Oh, right next to the door. Thank you. Oh, do you speedrun, Pedro? I love watching speedruns, but I would never have the patience to do speedrunning myself just because the hours and hours and hours of practice and the hundreds, if not thousands, of attempts I've mentioned on stream before, but there's an interesting video out there. I wish I could remember who did it, but um, it's done by someone speedrunning uh, the original Super Mario Bros. And they have superimposed footage of all their attempts over the video. So you can see hundreds of Marios running the same course. And it's interesting watching how even a very seasoned speedrunner, even they die to the first Goomba. I feel like there's some beautiful poetry in that. We've all died to the first Goomba. We've all had days like that. Um, and it's interesting, again, just seeing the footage of all those attempts, because when you watch um, a speedrun, usually it's something pre-recorded, unless it's like a GDQ. Um, so you're seeing the end product of all those hundreds of attempts and hundreds of, not, if not thousands of hours. Um, but that really gave you an insight into just how difficult it is to do speedrunning like that. And like a Mario, original Mario speedrun takes five minutes. Oh yeah, trying to do 100% on Rusty Bucket Bay on the N64 is really rough. Because yeah, if you die, you have to collect everything again. 
It's especially just the engine room with those pipes. And when I stream Rusty Bucket Bay, I wound up using save states, not just for my sanity in the chat, but also I had a really bad cold at the time and it was, it was not a good vibe. But I've 100 percented it on the N64, so I've done my time. I've suffered enough. Why don't I leave the game in widescreen? Well, this is the N64 version being emulated, so it's not the 360 version. So there is no native widescreen, unfortunately. This this is the cramped view we're stuck with. Ubadaka. Magnet malfunction. Auto-fixing program initiated. Magnet will be reactivated in 90 seconds. Why do you have that giant magnet there? I shouldn't question it. Is there a widescreen option in the settings menu and I just missed it? I guess to be fair, um, this is like how I played it in the N64. Ah, well thank you. I completely forgot. Now, is it true widescreen though, or does it just stretch the image so it looks kind of disproportionate? Because I know some games have that problem where it's it's quote-unquote widescreen, but everything just gets stretched and looks weird. Ah, natural widescreen. Why, wild how far technology has come, hasn't it? Again, we can look up... Uh, gameplay videos on YouTube now. If you get stuck and can't find something, there's an easy visual guide out there for you instead of having to read a text-based guide on GameFAQs. Which I hope that website never dies. Because that was a great resource, especially for games like RPGs, where a lot of information isn't even accessible unless you use a guide. Only the text is a little strange, and yeah, we don't see a lot of text anyway, so it's probably fine. A setting in games nowadays that's pan and scan. I remember, I know um, Mega Man 9 does, I assume Mega Man 10 as well, but I haven't played that one. It has a setting that, oh, I need to turn into a washing machine, what am I doing? Oh my gosh, I just I got so distracted. Um, has a setting to replicate uh, graphical defects from the NES, including things like flickering. I'm thinking too hard about how technology has evolved and how game guides have evolved. Or like Prima strategy guides. I talked about when I was streaming Diddy Kong Racing, but I remember being in a blockbuster and they had a selection of strategy guides there. And I remember flipping through the one for Diddy Kong Racing, and they had cheat codes in the back, and thinking, ah, I'm going to memorize all these cheat codes and put them in at home. And much to my dismay, some of them were typoed, and I couldn't get them to work, and I thought, had I remembered them wrong? But I distinctly remember, because the one I really wanted to work was the Joint Venture cheat code, which lets you play um, the single-player game with two players. Uh-oh, don't- no, no, I didn't mean to go down here. Oh, no, what have I done? I ruined it, I ruined it. Heck, I ruined everything. Goodbye, cruel worlds. It's all over. It's all over. Oh, it's still good. It's still- we're not gonna make it. I'm gonna have to go do that again. Forgive me. That's what I get for reminiscing. Ugh. Oh well, let me just turn back into Baron Bird, and I will focus. Ding dong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Electromagnet has been reactivated. And now I don't remember what weird tangent I was on. Oh yeah, they had typoed the joint venture code and it said joint adventure. But the actual code is joint venture. And I was so dismayed I couldn't get it to work. And then only later did I discover Prima printed it wrong. You know, I think the N64 controller is is a good controller. I think it still holds up. And when you play N64 games these days on... Um, or, like, emulate them with controllers that they weren't designed for, you really miss the N64 controller like this. 
trying to do the first person sections in this game with a right stick as opposed to C buttons has been miserable because like when you flick the right stick for instance it snaps back to center and the C buttons don't do that uh, meaning your aim is a lot wobblier and it's very hard to center your shots um, or even things like the positioning of the Z or Z button on the bottom um, there's just it was it was comfortable having it beneath your pointer finger like that and now I've got I've got it mapped to the left trigger in my game, but it's, just, it's not the same, you know? Yeah, the stick on the N64 controller does get very loose. I am blaming you specifically, Mario Party, the first one. But also, the D-pad. I think that's the one sticking point on the N64 controller. The D-pad is not good because it's so tiny. When you were a little kid, you couldn't use the items in Mario Kart 64 because your hands weren't big enough to hold the controller, so it sat on the ground. Aw. I could put it in widescreen, huh? Um, after this level, I could probably do that. I don't think I can... Can I access the options from the pause menu? I don't feel like I can, but I haven't actually looked. Oh, the N64 and GameCube both had tiny D-pads. The GameCube one was definitely worse, but maybe I'm misremembering. I feel like the D-pad on the N64 controller wasn't really that comfortable either. It wasn't used much, but I remember renting Mischief Maker specifically and being confused for a while because you can select stages and menu with the control stick in that game, but in the actual stages you have to use the D-pad. Okay, yeah, you can only access on the save select screen. That's what I thought. I feel like maybe it's not the size, but it was just stiff on the N64. But yeah, the GameCube definitely had a worse D-pad. Oh, you got Conquer. You bought Conquer's Bad Fur Day, huh? I was actually just talking about Conquer's Bad Fur Day uh, with Joe here the other day. Have you played it before, Pedro? I think Conquer's Bad Fur Day, like the N64 original, not live and reloaded. Um, which, I don't like Conquer's design in that game. It's just, it's not funny anymore, and it ruins one of my favorite gags in the original game. But Conquer's Bad Fur Day on the N64, I think, still holds up really well graphically and sound-wise. Um... <laughs> Like, just, like, Chris Seaver's voice acting is great. Do the jokes hold up? Mm, not really, no. There's some pretty uncomfortable ones in there, and a lot of the humor is juvenile, but sometimes there's really good jokes in there. Conquer's Bad Fur Day is a really hard game. I do not blame you for using save states. Like, uh, the fall damage in that game is cruel. Like, I was thinking, I, I saw Andorra stream Donkey Kong 64 a couple days ago. And when you fall in that game, even if you fall a really long distance, it looks like you only ever lose one melon slice. Um, which is very kind compared to this game, where you can lose a lot more health, and then I feel like the fall damage in Conquer's Bad Fur Day was even worse. I mean, he can do his little helicoptery tail thing, but it's not like Kazooie's glide. There we go. Oh, the bat part. Ugh, I hate that bat part. It's just... It's hard to control. Uh, like, it's hard to see where you're aiming. But hey, you did it! Oh man, I gotta turn back into Banjo now. Oh man, this just keeps going. Well, definitely no shame in using save states for any game, for the record. I'm very much in favor of accessibility features in games, and I think save states are a part of that, too. Plus, I think just for, like, uh, please get in there. I think just for, like, time and convenience's sake, sanity's sake... Do you think the bat part of Conquer's Bad Fur Day is the hardest? I remember a lot of parts of that game being tough. 
Safe states are unforgivable. Okay, we need to make Andorra play through Kaizo Mario World now. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of ROM hacks out there that are designed with save states in mind. And I can't say... I don't want to use save states there. I just... I mean, I know they're designed with it in mind, but... I feel like if your game is hard to the point where you're expecting players to regularly use save states to do frame-perfect tech... Well, I guess that depends on the person. For me, that's not a good time. For me, that's kind of tedious. I ran into a can. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a drum, but you know what I mean. What is a drum if not a very large can? Like the one that guy has. You played through Parallel Worlds. What did you think of it? Um, this is not where I'm going. Okay, where is the door that I opened? I don't remember. Where's the air conditioning plant? <laughs> it's my problem with Grunty Industries downstairs, thank you. I don't remember where anything is relative to anything else. The basement, thank you. If only we could use save states in real life. Do you ever find when you play games for too long that the game logic starts seeping into your brain and you find it's affecting your decision-making process? Like the Tetris effect, when you play Tetris too much, or any similar game, and you start seeing, like, playing too much, say, Guitar Hero, and seeing the charts in your sleep. Okay, there's the train station. Mm, it's like in here. Uh, it's the employee quarters. Parallel Worlds has some good ideas, but it's overly difficult. That's what I've heard. That it's... There's some clever stuff in there, but it, it kind of suffers from what a, a lot of ROM hacks have, where it's just... unenjoyably hard. I feel like difficulty in games is a difficult thing to master. Pun not intended, but I'll take it. Stairs going down on the ground. Uh, I have to go find... Them. Not the train station, I assume. Um... Yeah, let me go around here. Like, I have mentioned before, I think Hollow Knight did difficulty very well, by my metric. Because, like, if you, you died, you know what you did wrong. And I always felt like I was improving every time I, I lost a fight. I'd always do better the next time. Where are the stairs go? Oh, here we go, in the corner. The air conditioning plant, that's where you are. There we go. Okay, I just have to find the door. Oh, that's okay. I wish... What's your, your native language, Pedro? Nihongo ga hanasimasu ka? Probably not, but... Oh, Portuguese! Cool! I wish I could speak Portuguese. I've heard it's very difficult for English speakers because the sounds are tough to make. But I love challenging myself to try and speak other languages. Brazilian Portuguese. Cool. I, I'm, now I'm trying to think of how to say hello because I've heard it before and I can't remember. A oh, hello bell. How's it going? Yeah, I've heard Brazilian Portuguese and Portuguese from Portugal are very different, much like uh, Canadian French and Parisian French. What on earth is that? I think it looks like an enormous toilet cleaner. Well, he doesn't seem to be very mobile. See all the poor thing struggles to get in here? This shouldn't be much trouble then. Oh, it's hola. Well, that's easier than I was expecting. I know there's some similarities to Spanish, but I don't want to get it mixed up. Weldar, visually impaired welding torch. Ahem. I believe it states quite clearly in the worker's guidelines that bears are not to be let into the building. So? Well, you're a bear, aren't you? Uh, no. 
No. I must remember to wear my glasses. Well, I'm out now, so I might as well go to work on you. You don't have to. You really don't. Windows, you don't have to make that noise either. Thank you. Time to turn up the power dial, I think. Ow. You'll have to come closer. I can't see to hit you. Oh, please refrain from doing that. I'm full of flammable gas. How about a few nuts and bolts? Too soon, Weldark. Too soon. Really wish I could pan the camera a little more easily. I need to run. So I don't get hit. But I need to be ready for when he tries to inhale me. Ugh. Nothing like old games with wonky cameras. I guess I have to kill the nuts and bolts? Hey, buddy. There we go. Perhaps if I use my weights a little more. Uh-oh. Don't make me come after you. I was expecting a shockwave, because I've been playing Metroid. Ooh. Does he electrify the floor at some point, or am I misremembering? This isn't going as planned. Where's my emergency switch located? That's better. Now let's see how nimble you are. How are you? Is como voce esta? Am I saying that right? Ow. I should uh, be careful <laughs> when I'm reading chat. But I just love languages! Oh. Didn't mean to do that, but alright. Are they gonna come at me? Hello. 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 Hmm, I'll take that. Thank you. Uh-oh. I would also like to see what Dragon Kazooie would look like in the, the nuts and bolts modern style. That said, I'm not really a fan of, like, nuts and bolts' whole aesthetic. And granted, I haven't played it. Maybe it looks better in motion, but I just, ooh, remember not enjoying the more angular art style. I mean, I guess it's nice they tried something different, but... Ow. Oh no, don't go into first person! Oh, jeez. Oh, gee. <gasps> really? Ah, oh, the camera! The camera! I was trying to shoot. Rip. Man. Well, that's annoying. Jeez. I thought it was all going off without a hitch. Oh, well. I know how to get back now, so no biggie. It would be cool to have as an alternate skill in skin and nuts and bolts, I concur. I don't know if rear egg laying is effective because Weldar is actively sucking you in. And I don't know if the game has those kind of physics programmed in where if you bounce an egg backwards like so, if it would actually get sucked up or not. Does Nuts and Bolts have banjo in a suit? Can you get fancy banjo? That would be cool. Weird question. Nuts and Bolts, because I haven't played it. Does it still have the classic Banjo and Kazooie speech? You know, the... You know? Are you a bear? Yes, and you're heading for the recycling plant. Well, you know what? I died just for that extra dialogue. Well, what do you mean turn up the power dial? Are you going to electrify the floor right away? No, okay. There we go. Como voce esta? Maybe I should learn Portuguese. At least some basic phrases. I always wish that I could easily communicate with people in any language. Uh, 
let's go, let's go, let's go. So hello, pink spaghetti! Forgive my manners for not saying hello right away. You feel like a machine spitting bolts is a bad thing? Probably, but I mean, I don't know how well Weldar here is designed. The fact that he has uh, poor eyesight. <laughs> well, hey! Um, probably speaks to the quality of his construction. Even if I was in a boss fight, though, that's no excuse to miss my manners. Oh, so the speech isn't quite the same as in Nuts and Bolts? Oh. I feel like that that weird garbled speech is just like an essential part of Banjo and Kazooie. Uh-oh. Oh no, I think he spit- he, he- yeah, he got me. Ow. Ouchie. Hang on. Okay, I need to get some distance between me and Weldar here. Whoops. Boy, he's, he's not a good shot, is he? Oh no, I think he got me again. Jeez. So the fact he's pulling you in through the electrified floor, that's a problem. Well, there's another honeycomb there. There we go, okay. That's better. Come on, get in here. Single file. One more. There we go. Thank you. Too soon. Nope, not too soon. We're good. Okay. There we go. I would I would like this. Well, that was kind of a loss. Whoa, hey. I'm just gonna hope that goes in. No, you're not gonna go in? There. No! Come on, man. Ugh. You finished now, Weldar? No, he's still trying to step on me. Please, no step. Please, no step. Thank you. Thank you, Rare, for your commitment to Wahe. Oh, no! Oh, son of a biscuit! I think he got me again. No. Ugh, I'm so sad right now. Come on, Weldar. Please. Please. Go to a corner. Please. Really? You're not... Not gonna eat? Corner and then a square closer. Thank you. Uh-oh. I was gonna try and get more grenade eggs, but... Mm, maybe not. Mm, come on. Okay, I need you to wa hey. Okay, good. No! No, I didn't think he was gonna be able to suck me in from there. Oh man, I gotta do it again. I gotta do it again. When he jumps in the center, I might want to get out of Talon Trout. I think you are correct. This time, for sure. Hmm, who are the best characters in Banjo Kazooie? No, I think you can disagree on Hollow Knight's difficulty. I can definitely see how it wasn't wouldn't click for everyone. And I think difficulty in games and what constitutes a satisfying level of difficulty, I think, varies from person to person. It's kinda like it's like puzzles. I feel like everyone is good at different sorts of puzzles. Um like, I'm good at logic puzzles and puzzles that require thinking outside of the box. But I struggle with puzzles that require me to visualize objects in three dimensions. Um, like, say, a Professor Layton puzzle where you're given the net of a cube. 
with a map painted on it with roads on it. And like, okay, one of the faces of this cube is blank. And you need to pick which of these images will finish the map on the cube when it's assembled. I struggle with those because I get distracted so easily that I can't hold the image in my brain. Really? Come on, Weldar. Is he smart enough to aim where I'm going? I think he is. Oh. Okay, let me, let me try for science. Nope. Shooting the egg backwards does not work, but now we know. It is kind of weird how, like, they forgot about Brentilda entirely in Tui. And it is funny that they have, like, that one missing poster for Tootie. Can you use fire eggs in this fight? I've never tried. Just because the, the game gives you grenade eggs, so I, I just assumed I need grenade eggs. And it would make sense you could use fire eggs, too. Huh. Okay. Do they not reference Clanker and Nuts and Bolts at all? I feel kind of bad for Clanker. Just a poor trash disposal shark doing his best. They did? Oh! Or never seen. Aw, poor Clanker. He's in a museum. Oh. Well, he's not being used for garbage disposal anymore, right? You know, I gotta say, it's smart to have the AI that's clearly shooting where it thinks I'm going to go. Pretty sure Klungo does it too when you fight him. That Klungo throws his potions where he thinks you're going to go. Ow. Don't do that. Very rude. Clanker's level was the worst in the game. Worse than Rusty Bucket Bay? I mean, I don't love Clanker's Cavern, but I wouldn't say it's worse than Rusty Bucket. Oh no! Oh! Oh! I've been devoured! Oh, you're just gonna spit these guys out again, huh? Alright, well, they drop. <laughs> they drop honeycombs. Oh. That was really sad. That was very sad. Oh, good enough. Well, at least Kanga's in this game is the ticket master for uh, witchy worlds. Poor Chimpy, though. Relegated to rareware obscurity. I can't. Weldar? Weldar, I can't see. Weldar? If you wouldn't mind. Buddy? Friend? Okay. I'm no longer in Talon Trot mode. Freaking finally. Okay. We're good. Oh, well. Looks like my welding days are over. And he just takes it like a champ. I'm sorry, Weldar. <laughs> Whoops. Oh, thank you. I've heard Weldar gives people trouble. So I feel less silly. Still a little silly, but... What is streaming if not playing poorly, right? because you're half distracted the whole time. And I'm already half distracted when I play games on my own. So now I'm just fully distracted. Oh, he's still alive. Hey, buddy. Uh, I appear to be quite badly injured. That's too bad. Now where's our prize? Uh, I guess I can let you have this. Wow, thank you. Is that all we get? You gotta be kidding! You may use it to get back out. I stashed my chicky behind the giant fan for safekeeping, but there's nothing to stop you from reaching it now. Oh, when will I learn to keep my big mouth shut? Yeah, you know, if you had kept your big mouth shut, Weldar, uh, this wouldn't have happened to you. Oh, hydrate, I will do that. One sec.
I am hydrated. Thank you. Can I talk to him again? Let's find out. Hey. I don't suppose you can recommend a decent repair, man. I was hoping he had even more dialogue. Poor Weldar. You think Grunty spends money on repair staff? Absolutely not. Otherwise, Witchy World would be less of a travesty. <laughs> he was the repairman. Yeah, Weldar, you uh, welded things back together, so who welds the Weldar, if you will? How is he talking? Well, I guess he doesn't need lungs to speak. Maybe he vibrates, and that's how he makes sounds. <laughs> Fix yourself, buddy. That's so cruel. Wait, oh, I... other way, other way. Hang on, just let me let me leave. Oh, it's a Cheeto page. Oh, I think I have nine, so if I get ten. But I really wish I could turn the camera so it's behind me, but I can't. Reminder, I did the electromagnet thing. Which required first dropping the plate from above for Mumbo, then I fought a boss, and I still don't have a Jiggy. Yeah, this, this game makes your work for it. That's right, I am thinking too much. This game is a fairy tale, and things just work. I mean, yeah, you, you already have Grunty's lair music is basically the teddy bear's picnic. Oh, thank you. I sometimes I feel like I'm not a proper VTuber because I don't have lore or an Oshi mark or a name for fans. I always felt like that, that would be presumptuous of me. Yay. Ow. <laughs> Worth it. Worth it. No, I agree, and I think it's less pressure that way, too. Where am I? Let's see, waste disposal. Hmm. Get out of here. Boy, this room is so empty. I feel like there should be something in here. You ever feel that in games where, like, you go to a room and it just... You feel like maybe something was here in development and they got rid of it? Your characters are a literal pink noodle, but that's great! And it's easily recognizable! Oh, should I go to waste disposal and not, not this vent? Oh, okay, I see, I see. I'm above where I am. Oh, it's got a bow too? It's adorable! I feel like... And I don't mean this is disparaging against anyone, because streaming and VTubing are extremely difficult. And I have great respect for those who do it. Um, I guess that maybe said I'm not trying to sound a little self-aggrandizing, like, Mori, you're doing that right now, you know what I mean. Um, is that sometimes I see designs where there's so many details and they're so busy that it's they don't stand out as much. When you see a lot of really highly detailed designs, um, that they don't stick in your brain as well, at least for me. That's why my des design is very simple. But I also like very simple uh, aesthetics. Oh, this is the correct ability to go in here. Excellent. Sometimes simplicity is better, I concur. But again, that's just my personal design aesthetic and how I... I'm more likely to remember a design if it's simplified. Yeah, I concur. Too much info can mess with someone's um, memorability. Like, I seem to recall reading somewhere that a lot of Pokemon designs, especially in early gens, were kept very simple, deliberately, so it would be easy for children to draw them. And I like that design philosophy. Um, same with uh, shows and series where the designs are relatively simple with 
really recognizable silhouettes. Um, they stick in my mind more. And again, not that overly complex designs are a bad thing, but I'm also the type of person where when I see a really complicated design, like uh, Final Fantasy characters are a perfect example, um, especially ones designed by Tetsuya Nomura, I think about how would a person function wearing this outfit? Like, how long does it would it take them to get dressed in the morning? You know, how do they use the bathroom in something with several layers covered in belts? But then I guess if you live in a JRPG world, I don't think bathrooms exist, except unless you're in the Mother Universe. And if you're a character in the Mother Universe, you probably have bigger problems. Oh, thank you, Pedro. Arigato gozaimashita. Is it also gracias in Portuguese? You feel like a part of the Gen 1 designs might have been because green had kind of clunky graphics. That too. Ah, oh, staying in pajamas all day. I'm wearing pajama bottoms right now. When I'm at home, I basically live in pajama bottoms. Um, so I do want to go back and poke around in earlier worlds because there, there's other jiggies I could potentially potentially get now. Boy, I kind of, <laughs> I kind of wish I didn't have that Kazooie slam move. Sometimes when I try to roll or use Kazooie's dragon breath, I wind up slamming her instead. Oh yeah, making it widescreen. You know, I'll do that. I will try making a widescreen. So I'm going to save and quit. Because that's the only way I can get to the menu. I got killed by the health box. There's some delicious irony in there somewhere. Thank you in Portuguese is obrigado. Am I saying that right? Obrigado? I can't roll my R's. Gonna be weird having 90% of the playthrough in one aspect ratio. It's like that special, if you're a, a Homestar Runner fan, the uh, 100th Strong Bad email in widescreen. Wow. I don't know, I feel like yeah, that looks weird, doesn't it? Like the, the TV looks... Now fix the screen. Oh man, I'd have to change my whole setup. I think in the emulator itself. Uh, hang on. I don't know if I have... I can change the aspect ratio. Hang on. Let me see if that works. Oh, uh, that looks kind of weird. <laughs> I am in tube TV style, but I feel like that still looks weird. Hmm. Yeah, the, well, it's not just the text, too, but like... Hmm. I don't know. What do you folks think? Try it switching to widescreen or keep it the original aspect ratio. I have the letterbox now. I kind of prefer how it was too. Like the widescreen's not bad, but I feel especially because I've been doing the whole playthrough. Yes, I disabled 16 by 9, 4 3 ratio of the gods. I don't know. Is it okay? I think I'm going to keep it like this if that's okay. I know widescreen might look better for some, but I feel like having a. Especially because I've done the whole stream in this aspect ratio, that going back would just look weird. I can take a look in the game, certainly. Uh, hang on. Let me do that. Widescreen on. And then let me... Uh, Twitch is powered by cathode rays. It's like, it's like melee fans playing um, on a, like uh, CRTVs. Because you, you don't want that input lag, right? Let me open the game and see how it looks. I have to, I'll have to change how I'm capturing it, too. I don't know. It, it looks a little fuzzy. Even if I don't uh, change the aspect ratio on this, this stream. 
Yeah, I feel like N64 in earlier games, what Bell said, were designed with 4x3 CRTs in mind. Like, it's not bad, but I think I prefer the original aspect ratio, even in-game. I think I'm gonna switch back, but... It's not bad. Man, what is with Rare and, like, the game overs? <laughs> I mean, in this one, you don't even get sexy grunty, so what's the point, right? Oops, not multiplayer. Oh, you yeah, have widescreen on your whole TV. I think playing on TV definitely works better. Hang on. And I, yes, yes, I'm going to disable. Hang on. Eh, eh. Let me go back here. Yeah, I think for the N64, this suits it better. I can't remember. Does Conker's Bad Fur Day have a save and quit animation? I was trying to think of it the other day. I did confirm, because I double checked with Joe, that. Because I couldn't remember, it's been years, but in Conker's Bad Fur Day, there were lives in that game, but getting a game over, you don't actually lose any progress. Um, so it doesn't really matter if you get a game over or not. Okay, let's go to the plateau. I think it's based on how you died. So they are trying to get Conquer for the purpose of being a table leg. But say if you died by being cut to ribbons by underwater fan blades, ask me how I know, um, then Conquer obviously can't be a table leg. So you'll have a different game over screen based on that. Yes, hello, honeybee. I definitely uh, didn't die to spinning underwater instant kill fan blades in Conker's Bad Fur Day or anything. <laughs> There's a lot of things in Conker's Bad Fur Day that I feel kill you in one hit. Wow, I'm so healthy now. I can't remember in that game, if you fall in like lava, do you also die in one hit? Because again, it's been a while, but I feel like it wasn't as kind, air quotes, as Banjo-Kazooie, where if you fall in the lava, it just spits you back out. Yeah, that sure would have helped in the last fight, huh? Oh well. Live and learn. Hanging on the edge of tomorrow. Live and learn. Um, from the works of yesterday, etc, etc. I am curious how uh, Conquer Live and Reloaded is, but... I don't, I don't like the graphical style of it nearly as much as the N64 original. Like, I feel like they made Conquer too fuzzy, you know? I feel like that, that sleeker look suited him better. Plus, one of my favorite jokes in Conquer's Bad Fur Day. So, the game itself is pretty juvenile. Man, I have not missed this wobble. Again, I'm trying to hold straight forward. I am holding forward, and it just... You curve. Ugh, man. Anyway, uh, in Conquer's Bad Fur Day, um, there's a bit where Conquer has to get really hammered, so he drinks a lot of beer so he can uh, pee on a bunch of fire imps to put them out. Because, you know, Rare, Rare is a classy developer. And the peeing itself is very juvenile, but the fact Conquer turns away from the camera and you hear an audible zip despite him not wearing any pants to me is very funny. But in Conquer Live and Reloaded, they give him pants and it's not funny anymore. I agree, it lost its cartoonish magic. Oh man, this... Hang on a second, let me fiddle with something in the control input. Ugh, I feel like I'm trying to find the sweet spot in the controller dead zone to make it wobble less, and I can't... Again, if you're playing this on an N64 with C buttons, it's fine. But, oh, this is not made for a right stick. Holy smokes. Oh. If you get dizzy easy, may easily, maybe look away. Okay. I'm gonna try and be thorough. I'm gonna try and be thorough. Okay. Don't get turned around, Mori. Don't get turned around. Don't get turned around. Uh, okay. 
Okay. Uh, let's go down here. No, don't yeehaw. Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh. Ow, stop it. Okay. Good, good, good. Okay, okay, this is a dead end. Oh man, please. Please. The zip choke is funny, right? But they give him pants and it's not funny anymore. It loses that cartoonish charm. Oh, okay. Um, been up there. Let's go down here. Oh, Jesus. Wobble is killing me. I don't know why they gave him pants. Like, his, his whole design is just worse. Oh, please. Please. Do not yeehaw me. I do not want to be yeehawed. Please. Please. Stab. Stab. Okay. 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 Uh, let's go here. Okay. There's one in here. Oh, there's one over there, too. Okay. Focus. 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 Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted. Um. Okay. Big room. Big room. Okay. So this is near where I started, I think. No, I don't want that. I don't want that. Don't have time for that. Let me go up this ramp. Okay, mm -hmm. um... There's no door there, right? Oh, there is? Oh, there's... Okay, here. Eh. Okay, two. Two. Good, good. Trying really hard not to get turned around. Uh... Okay, I can hear... Where is it? Where is it? It's to my right somewhere. I think this is where I came in. Oh, I can hear them. This is maddening. Oh no, I can hear them, but I don't know where they are. Backward and below, bottom floor. Oh! I don't know where the last one is. No. No, I thought I was being so thorough. No. Rip. It's only one stick of dynamite. <laughs> Hi, Spooner. Walks into room and find a spontaneously reduced to ash. Wow. You played this on the N64 and you can say it was just as bad. I feel like it wasn't as wobbly, though. And the fact that I can't turn the right stick, like, it doesn't turn me in the direction I feel like it should. So I get turned around really easily. Oh, let me try that again. This is haunting me. It is haunting me. Oof. But if I try going right from the start, what then? Heck that guy. Okay, and then there was one over here. Okay. Heck this guy. Good. Okay. And then one down here. Okay, there's nothing. Ow, behind me. Just stop. Oh my gosh. This guy. This freaking guy. Figure the controls like the Xbox version. I'm not sure. I actually haven't played the Xbox version. Oh, please. Um, my brothers played the Xbox version, but I did not replay it on the Xbox. I don't know why I didn't. I guess I just, at the time when we had the, uh, the 360 hooked up, I was not feeling like playing Banjo 
Kazooie. Okay, I'm in here. Please, please. Okay. 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 Um, let's go up. I think, does this take me back to the center room? I think. Okay, there's one up here. Mm. It's maddening that I can hear them bouncing, but I don't know where they are. Okay, so there's one down here. Here. Oh, and I can hear the last one. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. <gasps> there it is! Yes! Much obliged to you, partners. How obliged? Are we talking a reward here? Well, all I got is this funny shaped nugget. I reckon you can have that. Thank you. If I went right, it said of left at the end, and I would have seen... Oh. And now here's the hard part. I have to find my way back out. Oh, I'm so sick of this wobble. This is why I will not be 100%ing this game, because doing the first-person sections with this controller is miserable. <laughs> Just trying to aim is really rough. And if I have to do it in the final boss fight, which I think you're right, that is a factor of it. Oh, man, that's going to be... I'm going to be wishing I would be fighting the original Grunty again. Okay, over to the left, I think, is the exit. And here, I hope. Uh, I think up here, yes, yes, this is the exit. I did it. We did it. Very appropriate cowboy spooter. Woohoo. Also, very belatedly, I concur that the the glide with Kazooie is a little disappointing, because I remember also hoping that she would get just total freedom of movement with regards to flight, and she doesn't, which is a shame, but at the same time, I can also understand why. Because if you could just freely fly anywhere, it would kind of break um, the design in some places. You're the sheriff of ordnance storage. I don't know, Andorra. Are you southern enough? there's like anything else in here that I need to do that's pressing. I mean, I will need 70 jiggies at some point, but I can just leisurely go back to some older levels. Ooh, you know, I could go to um, Witchy World from here. Because I know um, I can now carry uh, Boggy's last child. And I can feed the cavemen, too. Silent Hill 2 is a little scary. You've been playing Silent Hill 2, Spooter? Or do you mean that just as a general statement? In that Silent Hill 2 is a little scary, which... I would say it's maybe a lot scary, but I think that also depends on one's perspective, as horror is very subjective. Did I get the jiggy at the top of the waterfall? Mmm... I don't remember. That's not the one I, I had to fall to get to, right? Because I think I got that one. Let's, let's see, since it's an easy one and it's not far. Man, I've heard Ultra Kill's really good. Is it a spooky game? I've never actually played Ultra Kill. I've just heard it's really good. Silent Hill 2, um, I found, I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but Silent Hill 2, I felt really struck a chord with me for personal reasons. Um, and again, horror is very subjective. Okay. Ultra Kill, you've been doing a challenge for the sake of it. Silent Hill 2, you're not sure how far you are, but you're guessing around halfway. What do you think of them so far, Spooter? I assume you've been enjoying Ultra Kill if you've been doing a challenge of it. Ultra Kill is just intense, a good intense. 
Also, Endora, I guess I should ask, do I use the spring shoes near the entrance? Oh, you streamed the first act of Ultra Kill recently, Val. You should go follow Val. They're good stuff. They do a lot of shooters. Keep going down the river. Whoa, rolling, rolling down the river. No, you told me the wrong instructions because I got this one already. Oh, up the river. Mm. The other way. Silent Hill 2 is very fun and horrifying. Well, as long as it's fun in equal measures to the horror. Other direction. Oh, oops. Anyway, if you like uh, Doom and Doom mods and other shooters, uh, you should give Val a follow. You should give Val a follow anyway, because they're very sweet. Support the bun. Also, I don't know if Nekolus is still here, but you should also follow him. Because Nekolus is also very sweet and fun. Support the cat. Come on, Banjo. Yes, it would make sense that the water from the waterfall is coming from the other direction. But at the same time, I was thinking about the waterfall and the cavern where it drains. But of course. Oh, that. Oh. I see. Now, are there stringy step shoes in this box? Yes. Excellent. See, I'm glad you remember because I don't remember where any of the jiggies are in this game. Wowee, ten more! And I really want to do the quiz. I want to do the quiz, but I should probably save it, right? Um, I guess let's go to... Let's go near the train station, and I'll go back to Witchy Worlds. Oh, doing the Ultra Kill Challenge, you've been using Doom 1 and 2 music. You know, that reminds me in a weird way. I was thinking the other day... Do any of you, um, when you play games, do you always listen to the in-game music? Or do you listen to other music or podcasts or anything of the sort? Oh wait, it's not the train station I want. I was thinking about the wrong cave. Do the quiz now and save the backtracking for the final stream. I don't know, what do folks want? Do you want quiz? Do you want me to save it? Yeah, I need to go by the entry. Whoops. Path of Exile and listening to the stream. I had a coworker who really liked Path of Exile. You never listen to game audio, it just ain't for you. See, and I'm a weenie who had one of those headphone jack adapters for a Game Boy Advance SP because I find I can't play games without the music in most cases. Um, when I play Picross, I always put on like trance and electronic music or breakcore or something. Because that's my my uh, chill out and play puzzle games music. Um, but And sometimes if I'm playing Splatoon, I might be listening to other things in the background, but I always have game audio. Uh, I'm. Do I want to try another go at the Saucer of Peril? Because again, the first person controls are awful. Uh, let's do it. I'm here. Whatever. The only time that I really never listen to game audio is when I play Slay the Spire. I always listen to other stuff when I play Slay the Spire. Because that's also, I guess, like Picross, a turn my brain off and play puzzles. I mean, what is a deck building game if not a puzzle, really? Recently you've obtained a way to lurk more often. Oh ho. I'm very honored. Like, whenever, even people, if they're just lurking or watching my content later, I'm very honored by it, and I, I mean that truly. Or when someone says that they, they like, like, my playthrough or something, it just, it makes me super happy. Thank you. Tell your friends. Because I don't advertise my stream at all. So it's basically just, like, word of mouth or people finding me randomly on Twitch. <laughs> I did do the bumper car minigame, yes. I did do that. Because it's not miserable first-person aiming. 
And I'm almost getting used to these controls, which is weird to think about. Wait, poor Kazooie. She must be, like, shoved in the front of this UFO and just spitting eggs. I guess this is karma. There we go! Whee! It's me using the grapple beam in Metroid, except I always just go wee. I hope Samus has fun using the grapple beam. I mean, who wouldn't have fun swinging with a grapple beam, right? Also, same bell, I have some pretty bad focus problems, so a lot of the time, like, I always have to have, like, music or a video or something on in the background just because I need the noise. I think, um, like, I saw one, so sometimes when I need to focus or zone out, oddly, I like listening to a genre of music called breakcore, which is, like, a lot of sound, a lot of sampling. Um, it's, it's a lot, I guess, and maybe tough to recommend, but I saw a comment once saying that they enjoy breakcore because it kind of puts their ADHD mind at ease. Like, it's just so much noise that in a way it's calming, and that's kind of what it feels like. And I, I feel like that's kind of an extension of why when I play or not play when I'm like doing art or something, I need noise in the background. Um, the exception is if I'm reading a book. I don't like background noise when I'm reading. I remember I used to have an assistant manager who said that she liked going to bars to read books because she liked the noise and it helped her focus, whereas I could never imagine doing that. Not only because I find the thought of going to a bar, especially by myself, is a small lady very intimidating. What if somebody tries to talk to me? But also, I just, I don't like the noise, and I find it takes me out of the book. You go to a cafe to read? Again, I think it depends. Like, background people noise is okay as long as I can't actively hear someone's conversation. So otherwise, my brain will start trying to parse the words from the conversation, even if I don't mean to. Um, plus, a lot of cafes play music. And I find music is distracting. But I think it's different for everyone. I know some people, even reading books, they need background noise. Like my assistant manager I mentioned. That wasn't good enough, huh? Man. Jeez. Close to. Oh well. Bleep! You need more bleeping points than that for the prize. Bleep! I just got cursed out by a flying saucer. Yeah, heck you too, buddy. Um, I know, I thought I did better. Like, I'm almost getting used to the wonky controls. Oh, well. I do remember uh, Boggy's final kid is in the hell zone. So I will go to the hell zone. Did I get anything else in the pump room and Westworld? Uh, no copyright infringement intended. Um, ow. I don't know. Whoa. You just looked up Breakcore and it sounds like music from Sonic 06? Does it? Never leave the crosshair in the center. I try not to, but the thing about using the, the stick here is I feel the sensitivity is not the same as an N64 controller. So in some ways, I've been finding any section that involves aiming in first person has been really finicky to control. It's hard to see if you're just looking at me playing. I guess you can't see the crosshair because I don't have Kazooie with me. Did I already give this child food? Because I do have to give this child food first. I don't remember if I did. Can I just pick him up yet? No. I need to give this child food. Have you bought me a burger yet? Ugh. Alright, I'll get you a burg. Jeez. You might be thinking of the caves in Glitter Gulch Mine. I think I think you are. Okay. I should also pick up fries, because I can feed the cavemen. Now that I have the um, the claw clamber boots. I always forget what they're called, because I want to call them the suction cup shoes. 
Do you actually know what breakcore is, Spooter? I feel like it's... I don't know how well known of a genre is, but it feels very niche. The pop-pop shoes, that's right, they're the pop-pop shoes. Give me some fries, Joe! Yeah, fries coming right up. Uh, have a nice day, I guess. I knew he would say that. Yep, me too. Man, don't make fun of service workers for having to repeat ourselves. Yes, prepare for the impending rush. It's like, look, we have to say the same thing all the time. A coworker of mine has said that he often feels like an NPC because you have to repeat the same spiel over and over again. Oh, Ultra Kill uses break core? Heck yeah. Did I not open the burger stand? I didn't open the burger stand. Where's the switch for the burger stand? I feel like it's on a building somewhere. I know the stand for the fries was on the fries. Behind the ticket stand in the entrance. Let's find out. Let's all of us find out together. You've heard of break core, you're more into bassier stuff though. What do you like, Val? I like hearing what sorts of music people are into. Is it on top of here? Ugh. Well, there we go. We'll just pop it back on the grill and the punchers will never know. Oh, I've been rumbled. I can't say I've encountered that particular slang outside of this game. Maybe it's a very British thing. I've been rumbled. Like, I've been found out. Oh, D&B is good. I like D&B. Fancy a burger? Big Owl sells the tastiest burgers in witchy worlds. Ugh. How on earth did you get a job in catering? Well, I'm not sure, really. I used to clean out the toilets. I've lost my appetite all of a sudden. Go on, give him a try. I've got a few left. Do you want them? Sure. Give me some burgers, Al. Okay, kid. Burgers coming right up. You want fries with that? Ooh, yes, please. Well, too bad. Burgers is all I got. Go see Salty Joe. What? I've got no more burgers left. Better root around for some more. Oh, I think there's one just under your left foot. Where? I can't see it. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, I have Berg. You haven't listened to music in a long time since this time last year. You'll listen to songs you come across, but you don't open your playlist. Yeah, I used to I used to have an iPod Nano, and then a, a not iPod before that. And I would listen to music all the time, but now I feel like, well, I also don't want to install iTunes on my computer, but I just, I used to have a huge MP3 collection, and then I lost it, and I just kind of lost all motivation to uh, curate my music. Thank goodness you came. I'm really hungry. Don't you think you've had enough? No way. I just need a burger before I go find my mom. Oh, you've got some burgers. Please, 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 can I have one? Will you give me some food? <laughs> Yummy. Are you okay, kid? You're looking a little, uh, full, shall we say. My tummy hurts. Please carry me back to mom. I can't stand up. I'm not surprised. My Boggy's whole family is just a mess. See, I don't have Spotify, is the thing. And in some ways it would be handy to have, but on the other hand, I don't want to buy Spotify. <laughs> I don't feel like I would... Well use it at work is the thing, because of the Bluetooth speaker at work. Jolly Rogers uh, Lagoon, I think, is a good choice for a favorite stage. I like the music a lot. Hey, I can't see Mom here. This isn't the right place. Sorry, I tried to dump him on the ground. It's like I've put him in my bag, and I'm like, oh, put him back. Put him back. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, I don't want to listen to ads, especially like if I'm playing it at work. I don't want ads to come up. Most of my coworkers have Spotify, that's how they play their music. Usually the stuff I play at work is not quite as weird as what I listen listen to at home. Hang on, let me let me just put banjo in the microwave for a bit. That's what this is called now, by the way. This is putting banjo in the microwave and gently rotating him. Okay, your bear's done. I do have the Regal Bash, yes. Unfortunately, I keep using it by accident when I don't mean to. And then I take damage because you get stalled while using it. But it's funny. And honestly, it's what Kazooie deserves. Please, I just want to go up the hill. I just want to go up the hill. You only put songs into Spotify specifically for the Discovery For You playlist. Oh. That is handy. Especially because I don't usually go out of my way to find new music. It's just kind of what falls into my lap. But anyway, when I play stuff at work, I don't I do not do breakcore. I think it's too weird. I do a lot of, like, future funk and electronic. Um, and, like, maybe, like, some future funk chill wave, vapor wave playlists. What did I tell you about not running off? I'm sorry, Mom. Sorry isn't good enough, young man. You've been eating again, haven't you? Well, you'd still better want your dinner. It was that strange bear, Mom. He made me eat this burger. Enough of your lies. Wow. Oof. Oof. Well, I think we've all had enough excitement today. Time to go back home to hail Fire Peaks. Boggy will be wondering where we've gone to. He better have the dinner in the oven. Oh, bye then. Thanks again, Banjo. Take this jiggy I found in the ticket office earlier. Oof. Boy, this whole family is a tire fire. Jeez. Throw Kazooie on the floor like it's nothing. A normal Tuesday for Banjo. Oh, I was gonna do the Regal Bash. It's like, wait, I don't actually have Kazooie with me. Just kidding. Banjo Chewie is definitely a much darker game than Banjo Kazooie. For sure. Just, I mean, rares always love their black comedy, but this game in particular, like the Ice Cube murder. <laughs> you do a lot of, like, oops, dang camera. You do a lot of casual violence to. Innocent creatures, like feeding Boggy that fish. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Ice Cube murder is very funny. But I mean, like, what's really dark in Banjo-Kazooie, in, by comparison? Like, attacking Gobi? That's probably about as bad as it gets. Also, why do I take damage on these teeth anyway? They're not pointy. Maybe they're just, like, so disgusting and unclean that you take damage from it. Like, the, the cheat she gives you? I haven't gotten it here yet, I don't think, and I don't remember what it is. I played the stuffing out of this game on the N64, but that was a... That was a while ago. Not to date myself. Suddenly feeling old. Okay, I should... I should call it an evening soon, but... I do want to take... Uh, the food to the cavemen. Most of us be olds. It probably, but every so often you, know, you come across someone who's definitely much younger than you are, and it's just, oh. Oh. Have a good night, Val. I hope your pasta was delicious. Please take care and sleep well. Okay, I think... The, uh... Wow, the route to the cavemen is this way. Do I need another berg, actually? Let me see if I, I should get try and get another berg. Ow. Rude. That's right, Val ate your whole family. Except one strand, and that strand is you. You are the sole carrier of the spaghetti legacy. Hand over some more burgers. Sorry, kid, I'm sold out. Come back later, huh? Oh. I guess, do I still have Berg in my inventory? People who take two hours or more to get the code, like just by... Because it's RNG, right? You just keep going into her tent and hope that she gives it to you? I think, again, it's it's been a while. 
Okay, where are the claw clamber boots? Oh, they're not in there, right? I think it was just a, a Minjo. Or Jinjo, sorry. It's There's been nothing but Minjos for so long. It's like, I don't remember what a Jinjo looks like. I know we're around here somewhere. What's up this pipe? Your family is doomed. Oh. I mean, it's a delicious legacy. And where are the boots? I don't remember. So why can I climb those lights when there's nothing at the top of them? Disappointment. Oh yeah, the t tent takes a while to reopen too, just to like waste your time even more. Does anybody remember where the boots are? Because clearly there's got to be some around here. The other day you were at work tearing the sides off dot matrix printer paper and a coworker had no idea what it was. Wow. I mean, to be fair, I haven't seen that stuff since elementary school and even then, the uh, the computer equipment in our school was really outdated, like old Apple computers, like with the monochrome screens. And then I remember at some point we got like proper Macintosh computers with like kid pics. The cool stuff on it. No! I know you can take damage in the tent. Can she do enough damage to kill you? Or is it only if you go in the, the tent with not enough health? <sighs> ah, dang it. Is there an easier way up here? I'm just forgetting. Maybe I can just climb camera. Camera? Oh! 3D games, camera! Please, I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy. Macs are named after Macintosh apples. Easy with an N64 controller. Oh, I bet. I bet. Hey, Andorra, how's Goldeneye with it, a Switch controller, huh? Huh? Oh, wait. Can I jump up on here? So I'm like, surely there's an easier way. But yes. Uh, that's where the name comes from. Also, of course, of course I can't reach. Like, just barely. Incidentally, although I have no love for Macintosh computers, just because that's what we always had to use in school and they always drove me crazy. Um, but uh, Macintosh are my favorite apples. Unfortunately, they're only really good when they're in season. But like, boy, like a tart Macintosh apple, delicious. There are no boots here. Oh, no, just kidding. Just kidding. There are boots here. Okay, I don't want to waste this. There we go. Pop pop shoes. But yes, that's why their logo is an apple, because of the uh, Macintosh apple. The more you know. Wait, does anybody remember those smug, like, I'm a Mac and I'm a PC ads? I don't like it when people get smug over their, their choice of... Whether it be operating system or game console, you know, Sega does what Nintendo don't. Like, look, life is too short, we're all suffering together. Just play what you want to play. Hey. Oh, oh, geez, sorry, sorry. Me war, but still need food. Junk food, good. Me need food you got, you give. Unfortunately, yes. Mmm, that tasty! Me all happy now. I have saved these cavemen from extinction, and now they're going to go on to conquer the other cave people, and I'll have made everything worse. Yes, you need food. I used to think he was biting his own hand out of desperation, like auto-cannibalism, but I guess he's trying to eat rocks. Which, I always thought it was his own hand. I mean, and considering Rare's track record, would you be surprised if it was his own hand? I think there's one more. Hey, up somewhere? Are they 
back. No, that's out of the cave. Where's the last one? Maybe it is up top. And I have to split up to get there. I'm not sure. Uh, is there something I can climb on? Hang on. Because I see that ledge. But I don't need to grab that with both of them. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's right! Stumpanodon! Uh, right now it's 9.30pm where I am. I'm in Mountain Standard Time. So I can get up here with Kazooie, except then I can't get to the ledge. Am I missing something? Because I, I don't have the backpack. Unfortunately, Kazooie cannot hold. Midnight here! Happy New Year! How I get up? The ledge might be a little lower to the right. It's hard to see. Still, I can't... Like, I can't reach it. Oh, there we go! Okay. Huh. Oh, there we go. It helps to be able to see. Although that said, boy, I don't like the rooms in Metroid Prime where I have to use the thermal visor. It hurts my eyes. Or like um, in the phase on mines, kind of where the Metroid quarantine is. Um, the rooms with all the mushrooms and stuff. It gets dark in there and it's like I can't see. Time to either look in my thermal visor or look in the ghost dimension. Baron bird friend, save Oogle Boogle tribe from extinction. Must have reward now. Ooh, what's the best rare game? Mmm, that's tough. Why are there teeth marks on it? Me thought chocolate was inside. How do you guys know what chocolate is? Um, I'd probably have to say Donkey Kong Country 2. Because that is still one of my favorite games of all time. Um, it's- when I think of rare, I do think of like their... 3D platformer N64 era as really being their standout as a developer, but... I love Donkey Kong Country, too. What about you? Not just Pedro, but everyone. Do you have a favorite rare game? I want a 5,000 word essay on my desk by Monday morning. No, no, no. Okay, which way are the stomping grounds? I think there's a warp pad I can take. Uh, let's find a warp pad. Banjo, Kazooie, and Tui, also excellent choices. I feel like if I had to pick a favorite between Kazooie and Tui, I'd almost go with Kazooie just because it's more contained and I think it's a tighter experience overall. Like, don't get me wrong, I love Tui as well, but there's, again, you have levels like this where they're just so big and expansive that I get turned around. That Jinjo is still in there. <laughs> ah, man. Pretty sure you said 3,000, or sorry, 5,000 words about Donkey Kong Land 3 at this point. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Nor would I hold it against you. I know I just got up that ledge, but I'm going this way, because there's a warp pad this way. The only rare game you've played is the first Donkey Kong Country. Huh, what do you think of it, Belle? I think the first Donkey Kong Country is still good, but... Donkey Kong Country 2 is really where they shine. Like, Donkey Kong Country, I feel, is a lot... It's more difficult and not always in the best way. Um, the uh, the minecart stages in that game in particular are really hard. I think partially because of the collision. I love the roller coaster stages in Donkey Kong Country 2. Like, I would just do them for fun. Just to just to challenge myself, because I don't know, do it. It's same with the the skiing stage in Yoshi's Island. Um, I would do that one for fun because there was something really satisfying for me about doing something really quickly um, and doing it so skillfully, like just mastering all those tight jumps, like like a bite-sized speed run. But as much as I love the roller coaster stages in Donkey Kong Country 2, again, the, the mine carts in Donkey Kong Country, really hard. 
You only need two pieces of health to survive being stomped. I guess you're right. Oh boy. Why didn't I follow the right path? Uh-oh. Oh, we made it. We're good. You haven't played any of the Donkey Kong franchise, but you intend to. Well, I strongly recommend Donkey Kong Country 2. I'm a little biased, maybe, because I love that game. Um, again, the first Donkey Kong Country is good, but it's not as polished. Um, and definitely a lot harder. Nothing like the minecart stages with the final screw you crumbling at the end, if you know you know. You think you finally survived the gauntlet, and then like there's one last crumbling right before the exit. That kills you. There we go. Hooray. I think definitely give Donkey Kong 64 a try. Hey, Banjo! You're not leaving this world without me. All right, you need both of them here. Okay. All right, well, Kazooie's turn, I guess. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. I can see this definitely freaking out a lot of children. If you play, you intend to buy an SNES first, then buy Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3. I wonder how much they go for these days. That's right, give Donkey Kong 64 a try. You can't complain without a frame of reference. I should probably call it an evening, though. It is pretty late. And I need to rest because it's been a long day. It's been a long week. I'm so out of it. Um... But yeah, uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to do here in Pterodactyl Land before I call it an evening. I mean, I guess I was going to say, I guess we could go see uh, Dippy, but we already got the Jiggy from Dippy. If you hold multiple of the new weapon in Ultra Kill and twirl it, you'll fly. That rules. I'm sure there's tons of easy Jiggies I'm missing that I just can't remember. I'll think about it over the weekend, too. Because, uh, I mean, playing this game has definitely jarred my memory for a lot of things. Which I don't need to go here. There's a warp pad. Plan is Donkey Kong Country- or sorry, Donkey Kong 64 first. I'm curious what it would be like for someone who would play Donkey Kong 64 first and then go back and play the uh, Super Nintendo games. Because Donkey Kong 64 feels a lot more like uh, Banjo-Kazooie than it does the earlier Donkey Kong games. Um, I think maybe I should just call it an evening here, because I can't think of what else to do, and I do need to rest, but... All the water and grunty industries, the pigs, mmm... Maybe I'll go to the pigs first, and then do that, and then call it an evening. Well, I'm thinking about it. Go to the pigs. And we can hear the nice music in Jolly Roger's Lagoon before I go. I think part of why Donkey Kong 64 feels more like a banjo game isn't just that it's a 3D open world collectathon platformer, but also that the music was done by Grant Kirkhope as opposed to David Wise. So that in turn also makes it feel very much like. Have I been up there? Hang on with the claw clamber boots. I don't think I have. It makes it feel a lot more like a banjo game than a Donkey Kong game. Oh, this is not where the boots are. Oh, they're by Hailfire Peaks. Never mind. And I'm gonna get the pigs now, otherwise I'll forget it. <laughs> and it won't take that long. Yeah, Grant Kirkhope is a fantastic musician. His style is really distinctive. Like, when I played Mario and Rabbids, which, by the way, if you haven't played, is a lot better than you probably think it is. If you weren't aware. Um, but as soon as I heard the music, I was like, is this Grant Kirk? But yes, it's Grant Kirk, though, because his style is so distinctive. There's a YouTube channel I enjoy called 8-Bit Music Theory. Um, I think I recommended it before, but uh, at one point they did a video about Grant Kirkhope and sort of what makes his music so distinctive. 
like that how it's got such a, a such a um a bouncy feel to it oh, that's right he was on game grumps or i also know he collaborated with the the artist um family jewels as well um to play some banjo music which is really cool the pool looks much cleaner now thanks You've still got the temperature problem to sort out, though. Oh, wait, I didn't cool it. Water is cleaner, but there's still the temperature to fix. Yeah, and your freaky arm. Okay, well, never mind. I thought I did that, but I forgot. I murdered the ice cube, and now I have to drain the water. So never mind. I'll do that next time, and I'll call it an evening now. But hey, we got to hear the nice music here. So is it all bad? Maybe a little. Oh, Kazumi Totaka is also a great composer. Predictable that you're a Toby fan. Toby is also a fantastic composer. Jolly Roger's basement I need to glide to. I think you were correct. Um, I keep getting distracted. But it's like I'm here. I just, like, I need the hit of getting one more jiggy. <laughs> oh, wait. No, the, this isn't the way to the basement. You blow up the way to the basement in here, but I already did that. <laughs> Listing things to see what you remember, huh? Well, I'm glad you remember where stuff is, because it's been way too long for me. I feel like I should listen to the stuff Toby Fox has composed for Homestuck. I've never read Homestuck, and I feel like it would be just too intimidatingly large. Also, this is a weird thing for me, but I don't like fast-moving GIFs. They're just uncomfortable to look at, and I think Homestuck has a lot of them. Like, it's not for, like, say, epilepsy or anything. I just... I can't explain why. I just don't like them. But yeah, Toby Fox is an excellent composer. Um, Flashy Goodness is good, too, because I was playing some of their music. Um before stream the other week. Oh, there's a lot of great composers out there, like David Wise, as I mentioned. And of course, we can't forget the great Koji Kondo. Or Yoko Shimomura. Yoko Kano. Oh, there's, there's a lot. Okay, anyway. <laughs> yeah, before Andorra distracts me with more jiggies, I'm gonna call it an evening for real. So, Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me for Banjo and for your patience with my extremely distracted brain, as always. But as I said, it's been a very long week. So I hope you have a wonderful evening. Please stay safe, stay healthy, take care. And I will catch you next time for more Paper Mario. Bye-bye.